Welcome to Season 8 of Knit and Crochet Now. I'm Connie Ellison and as you can see we've made some exciting changes this season but as always we'll continue to bring you the same wonderful knit and crochet designs you've loved in the past. Today's show features Lacey Look Cardigans. Knit along with us on our first project a button front cardigan with a lacy bodice that's knit all in one piece. Next in our technique corner we'll see how to put a lifeline into lace knit projects. To finish up, we'll crochet a short sleeve cover up with an all over lace design. Layer for winter or wear it over a sundress to get ahead of the season. So stay tuned for Knit and Crochet Now. From the editors of Crochet World, Creative Knitting and Crochet Magazine, it's Knit and Crochet Now. Presenting new designs and stitching techniques featuring Connie Ellison, Lena Skavagerson, Melissa Leitman, Jenny King. Stay tuned for knitting, crocheting, yarns, needles, and more. Today's project theme is Lacy Look Cardigans. Hey there, I'm Melissa Leitman. Today we're going to make this beautiful Gaia cardigan. It's really fun to make. It's all done in one piece, so there are no seams. Easy finishing. If you're like me, you're more likely to make something and actually finish it if there are no seams involved. It's constructed in one piece from the bottom up. You're going to decrease as you go. So it's got a little bit of a flared shape to it. We'll decrease. We're going to do a horizontal band just below the bust. This is worked in reverse stockinette stitch. So down here, you're knitting on the right side. And, and on this side, you're purling on the right side to create some texture. Then we're going to begin a lace pattern. I'm going to show you how to work the lace chart. When we get up to the armholes, we're going to stop and we're going to work back and forth just on the front, decreasing for the armhole, decreasing for the neck. You'll do the same thing for the back, the same thing for the other front. And then the best part of all is that we're going to learn how to do a three needle bind off up here at the shoulders. Then we will pick up stitches along the armhole for the sleeve and work our way down using short rows. Let's talk about how to read a knitted lace chart. Here's our chart, and there's a key telling you what all of the symbols mean. Um, here we've got, for example, blank boxes mean knit. The circle means yarn over. We're going to be working lace. And then we have little diagonal lines. The one going to the right is the knit two together decrease, and the one going to the left is the slip slip knit or SSK decrease. I'm going to show you how, how to do all of these. There are instructions here, depending on what size you're making, where you're going to start and end on the chart. I'm going to pretend that I'm making a size small, and it says to begin at A, which is down here. So I'll start at the very right hand corner of the chart, work to D, I'll work all the way across, and then repeat between B and D as many times as I need to to get across the row. And I'll show you how it's done. Row one's going to start with knit two. And then the right leaning decrease is the knit two together. So we're going to knit two together. Yarn over. To do a yarn over, you bring the working yarn between the tips of the needle to the front. And as we knit this next stitch, the yarn will go over the right needle, and that will be our yarn over. So here's our knit one. And then another yarn over, bring the yarn to the front, and the yarn will go over the needle as we do this next stitch, which is the S, S, K stitch, where we slip two stitches, one at a time, knitwise, and then we knit them together from that funny position. Then we're going to knit two, And we are now on the left-hand side of the chart. So we're going to jump back now to B. We have to knit one more. So it was really like knit three. And then knit two together. Yarn over. Knit one. Yarn over. Slip. Slip. Knit. Now, if you're like me, sometimes when you do your slip, slip, knit, decrease, the stitch is sort of wobbly. If you want it to be an exact mirror image to a knit two together, you see here's the SSK and here's the knit two together. If you'd like it to be a perfect, perfect, perfect mirror image, what you might want to do is try this. Slip the first stitch knitwise, 
but slip this next stitch purlwise. When you knit them together from that position, many knitters find that the stitches lay flatter and it's a better mirror image to a knit two together stitch. Let's just eyeball the chart a little bit more. Row two um, is going to be worked in this direction. It's going to be all pearls because the, the blank box means pearl on wrong side rows. And then row three, and then row four, and then row five. You're going to follow the chart, repeating rows one through 16 as many times as you need to. I'm going to take out that SSK that I just started. And I'm going to continue across the row. Um, here's my knit three, my knit two together, my yarn over, my knit one, yarn over, slip. Here's the other way of doing a slip slip knit, slipping that second stitch purlwise, and then knit them together. And then we're going to end the row with knit two. Then we're going to turn our work and row two, wrong side row, starts on the left hand side of the chart. We're going to work in this direction and it's all blank boxes which on the wrong side mean purl. So let's just go ahead and purl for row two. Okay, let's take a look at the sweater. Um, we have worked up until we get to, say, the armhole, and we're going to decrease for the neck, decrease for the armhole, and this is the fun part right here. I've made a little sample so I can show you how to do a three-needle bind-off. So these are sort of a little mini fake front and a piece that's a mini fake back. Make sure that your armholes are together with the right sides facing each other, and off we go to do a three-needle bind-off three needles, one, two, three. What we're going to do is we're going to knit one stitch from the front needle and one stitch from the back needle together as if they were one stitch. Oops. First stitch is always the hardest one. And pull it off. Then we're going to do the second stitch the same way. And when you have two stitches on the right needle, you're going to pull the first stitch over and off the second stitch as if you're binding it off. It's a three needle bind off. You're going to knit the next stitch together with its counterpart and off. Pull the first stitch over and off the second stitch. We're going to do that all the way across the row. Now this is the last stitch. We're going to bind it off and then we are done. Let's take a look. Oops. Let's take a look at our shoulder seam. Look how neat that looks. Looks almost invisible. The best part about doing three needle bind off like this is that for the sleeves, all we need to do is pick up stitches along the edge here, and then we're going to work the sleeve downward. So with the right side of the sleeve facing you, get some yarn together here. With the right side, of the sweater pieces facing you, we're going to take a circular needle and we're going to pick up and knit stitches. So I'm actually creating new stitches. I'm going in stitch for stitch. I'm picking up stitches all along the edge. I'm going below the bind offs and for the, um, for the vertical sections up here, I'm going to go in between the first and the second stitch of each row, going into three rows and then skipping a row. And the reason for that is because the stitch gauge and the row gauge of stockinette is different. Three rows, excuse me, four rows are the same uh, distance as three stitches. So we're going to go into th three out of every four rows. We're going to pick up stitches all the way across this armhole from the front all the way to the back. And we're going to work our sleeve down. We won't have to set in a sleeve. It's going to be super easy. 
I've picked up stitches, approximately three stitches for every four rows of knitting. And I'm just gonna purl a row, but I'm not gonna do the entire row. I'm just gonna sort of fake it through the magic of television because I'm so excited. I wanna show you how to do short rows. So just let me get partway through this row. I'm gonna pretend, all right, short rows are when you don't go all the way across the row. Um, so we're gonna do, we're gonna be on a knit row. And we're gonna knit a few stitches. Just the regular, you know, oops, this one is twisted. Uh, just, you know, knit stitches the way you normally would knit the stitches. And then at some point you stop and you wrap and you turn. So the very first thing that you're going to do is you're going to slip a stitch purlwise and then wrap the stitch by bringing the working yarn from the back to the front, then return that slip stitch back to the left needle, take the yarn back to the back again, and turn. That was wrapping and turning on a knit row. To wrap and turn on a purl row, it's just a little different, let me show you. You're gonna purl a bunch, and you're gonna slip a stitch purlwise, take the working yarn to the back, slip the stitch, back, take the yarn back to the back again so that you can turn, and now you're ready to knit. That is all there is to it to short rows. As you continue working, what's gonna happen is you're going to come across those, when, when, when you get all of the stitches picked up, you're gonna come across all of the wraps. And as you knit that row, you're gonna pick up the wraps with the stitch you're working to hide them. It will be beautiful and clean, just like what you see on the mannequin. On today's Technique Corner, I'm going to show you how to put a lifeline into your knitting. Just like in any other situations in life, you wish that you could go back and change things if you mess up, and with your knitting, you can. So I'm going to show you on this little piece that I've started, where I'm working a lace pattern, why it would be so great to be able to have a lifeline. And a lifeline means that you can go back down to that row where you last uh, finished your last repeat of the pattern. And as you see here, I've been working this chart and I've been working all the 16 rows of the chart and now I feel it's time to secure what I've done so far. So, I'm using dental floss because that's what I've figured is the, what works best for me. I've tried, uh, you can try like a thin yarn, but it has to be really strong and really thin. But uh, a dental floss is actually really the best thing you can go with. So I cut a piece, it has to be longer than the piece you're working on. And you thread it on a needle and then you just stretch your stitches a little bit and you go in and make sure that you go in underneath the stitches like this and just keep going in between the stitches and you, after you go through a few of them, you can start pulling the floss through like this and then make sure that you continue where you finished last, keep. And it's a little bit fiddly here, but it's worth it at the end and I'm gonna pull it through like that and I can pull it off the needle and make sure to center the strand so, and as you can see, you can't even see it but it's running there between the needle and the stitches. So we're putting that there and here, I have now kept working a couple of rows and I see, wow, I made a mistake. I need to start over again. I'm just pulling these this out, I can do that now, because I know that I have my lifeline, and I'll just move on with my unraveling until I'm down to the row where these all are secured. You can see how the, the dental floss is running through the stitches. Here I am now, just being able to pull up the, the floss and see where it's on the stitch put the stitch back on the needle, making sure it's leaning the right way, which means that the front, the front of the stitch is gonna lean this way, as always. And I'll just put all these back again, and then 
I know that I'm on the last row of my chart, so I know exactly where to pick up again. So just going through here, making sure, and if one stitch is a little bit tight, you'll just put on the, pull the floss and you'll be able to see the stitch and go into it. So you'll just keep going along, along the row like this, putting all stitches back, ready to start on next row again, you know where you are. And the good thing here now, once your project is finished, you can just simply pull out your floss like this, and you see, it doesn't leave any marks. It's not gonna mess with your gauge. Uh, if you would use a thicker, then there might be leaving gaps. So that's why I really like going with a dental floss or a really, really strong, super thin strand. And as you can see, didn't leave any marks. I could just feel so safe and secure. So this is how you put a lifeline into your knitting. G'day, my name's Jenny Keen, and I'm here from Australia to show you a couple of tips and tricks in the crochet industry. Um, today I'm going to do this gorgeous cardigan. It's a simple one to make. It has the front panels and the back panel are all one stitch, one pattern repeat stitch, and only two rows. Then the sleeve and the fronts are done in a slightly different stitch, so it's an easy one to master. You're just gonna love it. So let's get started. The first stitch you need to know is, I normally start with a chain, but the first stitch you need to know is doing a foundation half double. Now you've got to bear with me because in Australia we call it a different stitch and I just have to remember that you want me to speak American. So I've done three chain. We're going to insert the hook into the first chain and now we're going to, instead of pulling through all three loops as you do with a half double, we're just going to pull through one. And what we're doing is making a chain. It's a really nifty way, instead of doing the, all those horrible chains, going to do it again. Yarn over. Now we insert the hook, I hope you can see, in the base of the stitch there, that's actually the chain we just made. We pull it up, got three loops on the hook, Yarn over and pull just through the first one. That's our chain. Yarn over and pull through all three. Let me do it again. Yarn over. Now what we're aiming for when we go down here is under two loops. And it makes a really nice stretchy bottom if you go under the two. You can go under the one, but if you go under two, it's better. So pull through one and that's our chain and then yarn over and pull through all three. Now you're gonna do that for the bottom or the foundation row of all the pieces that you're making. We're gonna to move to the next stitch and this is row one. Row one, we're just gonna do one chain, chain one, single crochet in the first stitch, chain one, Skip one, single crochet in the next stitch. Now this is where our pattern repeat starts. We're gonna chain three, one, two, three. Skip two stitches, one, two. Single crochet in the next stitch. Chain three, two, three. Miss the next two stitches or skip them as you say over here and we're gonna do a single crochet in the next stitch. So just to refresh your memory, that's inserting the hook in, pulling up a loop, two loops on the hook, yarn over, pull through. Now you're gonna work that right to the end until you have only two stitches left. And then you're gonna do a single crochet, a chain one, and a single crochet at the end to finish it off. This is what it looks like if you've worked a little bit of it. Let me put it out here on the table. Our second row I haven't covered, but I thought I'd let you see. It's just a quite a simple one. The one thing that we need to do now is another nifty trick. And I've only just learned this recently and I love it. Normally we chain three to go up for a double crochet and it can get a bit loopy and gapy. And I've learned that if you do a chain one instead, let me just do the chain one so you can see it. Chain one and then we work to the first stitch. But when we have three chains, 
We usually use that because it's fat enough to be a double and tall enough to be a double. This time around, we're just going to do a double into the first stitch. So we're not doing three to count for that. So one double. Now we're going to do a, what they call a double crochet V stitch. Not hard. And we're going to work that into our single crochet. So yarn over the hook, insert it in, finish our double, do one chain and do a double into the same spot. And it actually looks like a V-stitch. And into every single crochet across, we're going to do a V-stitch. Now, once you've learnt these two rows, you've got the back and the front of the cardigan done. And it's a nice, easy, no-brainer stitch. Nice for relaxing in front of the television. Chain. And we work right across to the end. And when we get to the end, we're just going to put one single double crochet in to keep the edges straight. So that's all that done. So that's going to get you all the way up to the armhole, at the back and the front. Now we're going to be working on the stitch for the front panel. Once again, you start with your foundation half double. But this time around, we're just going to do a chain and we're going to work a V stitch in the first stitch. We're going to skip one, two, three. I know you already know how to do a V stitch. Skip one, two, three stitches. And we're going to do what I would call a shell. I'm going to pull it through two, through two. So we're doing two doubles. Chain one. Two more doubles. It's got to go in the same space, the same stitch. Chain one. Two more doubles and all of this is worked in the one spot. So you can see that there. We're going to skip three more stitches. One, two, three and we're going to do a V stitch. Once again, you know how that's done. A double, a chain, a double, skip three stitches, one, two, three, and do another shell. So it's two doubles, chain one, two doubles, chain one, and two doubles all worked into the one stitch. And you continue that right along. Let's go to the next row. Once again, we're starting with the one chain. This time, instead of the V stitch, it's sort of a stretched out V stitch. It's one double, two chains, and one double. And we're going to go to our shell, and we're going to work two doubles into the first one chain space. And we're going to do two chains. So this is a two chain row. Two doubles into the next chain space and then the stretched out V into the V stitch. So it's one double and two chains. And you're going to repeat that all the way across. I've used another colour here just so it's easier for you to see my working. Now this stitch is the same stitch as we do in our sleeve. That's it there. And when we work our sleeve, we start from here and we work down that way. And you've just added some increases there to make it flare out. Now I want to point out to you that along the edge here is a border. Now on all the pieces of the jacket, you're going to be putting this border and it matches your foundation double crochet, half double. So you can see that there at the bottom of the work, then we're going to put it all the way around the outside edge. And I'll show you how that's done. Start with a slip knot on your hook and we're going to insert that into my work. Now I'm going to yarn over, but you have to put your finger on that or it'll come undone on you. Trust me, I know. And then we pull through all three. Now we're going to yarn over and go into the same spot to do another half double, but we don't finish it. 
we're going to now insert the hook a little bit further along into the side of the stitch and we'll have four loops on the hook. And it's sort of doing two half doubles together. I think that's probably the best way to explain it, except that we yarn over and we put it, the first part into the same spot as we did our last one. So three on, insert the hook again, pull up another loop and you've got four on, yarn over and pull through all four. Yarn over, and we're gonna do that again. Yarn over, go straight into the same spot as if we were going to finish a half double and then we insert it a little bit further along and pull up another loop. Yarn over and pull through all four. And that gives us a very, very compact stitch and it's going to make it easier to stitch all the piece, garment pieces together. And it'll have that nice unique border. I think you'll love it. Let me do that one more time for you because there's something different. Yarn over. Pull through, pull up another loop in the next stitch and pu pull through all four and go all the way around the outside edges. You are just going to love this cardigan, I know, and once you start, you probably want to have one in every colour. Thank you for joining us this new season. Remember, all of the patterns for today's projects are on our website. Next time, afghans are in bloom on Knit and Crochet Now. If you'd like to get more tips and tutorials, product reviews, and updates from the Knit and Crochet Now team, visit our website at knitandcrochetnow.com and sign up for our free monthly email newsletter. Today's show is number 801, Lacy Look Cardigans. More stitching inspiration is available with a year subscription to Creative Knitting, Crochet, or Crochet World magazines, which includes our Season 8 DVD set of Knit and Crochet Now. The cost is $34.99. To learn more, go to knitandcrochetnow.com. Seasons over 100 episodes of Knit and Crochet Now are available for you to access online on your computer, tablet, or mobile device. Purchase for $24.95 annually. Brought to you by Annie's for those who are passionate about yarn and creative expression. With Annie's Craft Store showcasing patterns and supplies since 1975 and with magazines including Crochet, Creative Knitting, and Crochet World on your favorite newsstand or at Annie'sCraftStore.com. Few things are more satisfying than learning a new creative skill and one of the best places to get top quality instructions from some of the best teachers in the country is at AnniesOnlineClasses.com. We have classes in knitting, crochet, and lots of other crafts. Visit us today and watch a free preview. If you find a class you would like to take, we deliver it to you immediately. It will be yours to keep forever. With easy online access from any browser, you can watch, pause, watch again as many times as you want. You can also find lots of supplies and patterns for your newfound skills at Annie'sCraftStore.com. Make sure to visit us online very soon.